I get messages on Facebook like I've left the path of God and I need to repent and that I'm the devil incarnate. I think they're scared of what it represents. The question everyone's still asking is, why do they care so much? We are in the very beginning stages of trying to understand what a cyborg is and what that person machine will look like. I have a very unusual name. My name's Mialudo Meow Meow. I legally changed it. I'm 34 years old and I'm a biohacker. I have three implants. I have a, an NFC tag in the back of my hand on my thumb. I have my Opal card that allowed me to catch public transport that sits just behind my pinky. And I have a small NFC tag in uh, just behind my wrist. So the two, uh, the tag here and the tag here are reprogrammable chips. So they kind of uh, hold one kilobyte of information that could uh, trigger a Google Maps location, it could unlock your phone, it could have a pre-written SMS. The Opal card that sits behind my, my pinky was subject to a recent court case in which I fought the government uh, over whether it was a valid ticket or not because the card had been modified. Even though I was considered guilty, uh, no conviction was recorded uh, due, to, due to unusual circumstances. Right now, it's blocked, and the only way for me to get that unblocked would be to fight the government in the Supreme Court. This kind of captured the country's and the world's attention because it was one of the first uh, court cases about cyborg rights. So what does it mean to have technology in your body and what ownership do you have over that, especially with respect to proprietary technology? <laughs> What's really exciting about running an interdisciplinary lab is that we can do things that universities can't do. But I think biohacker labs serve as a kind of focal point to allow the community to engage with technologies that they might only hear about on the news. This allows us to start opening up conversation and those conversations reshape the way that the culture functions. The biohacking movement is, is building. It's becoming a serious force. It has huge amount of value and that value is actually outside of first world countries. So in a biohacker lab, we don't have a lot of funding. And this means we have to often find low cost solutions to things that are traditionally very expensive. And when we solve this, we actually solve the scientific problems that third world countries face as a society. I see technology as a snowball that builds momentum as it rolls down a hill. And I think about human evolution as a similar thing. So it's our responsibility as humans now, at this stage of our technological advancement, to take control over our own evolution and bring about that transhumanist future.